when you need to test a method, you start with simple arguments. But will it work on an edge case? So you bring several inputs to test. But that it's too much work and likely you are forgetting some cases. That's where this testing approach can be a revolution to the way that you write tests. The approach that I'm talking about is property-based testing. On property-based testing, instead of asserting based on examples, you check properties. You can think about properties on the mathematical term. And to check those properties, we'll be using a generator. The generator will produce hundreds of inputs that we'll be using them to check our property. The amazing thing about property-based testing is that this generator will build a set of data with a lot of edge cases that usually will not think about those. The results of checking our property with all of those inputs will be then forward to a shrinker. The shrinker is responsible to optimize the response for us. So instead of looking into a result where dozens of those inputs failed, we can look into a specific value and see which type of thing we need to address. So we can say that with property-based testing, we can optimize our time since we have this generator building a lot of test cases for us. But also it's a good tool to build a bulletproof system since we'll be testing our application against a lot of values and a lot of those, we usually don't think about them. In .NET, the best way to approach property-based testing is using the library FES Check. FES Check is built using F Sharp, but you can use it in C Sharp as well. For the example that I want to show you today, I try to avoid all of those classic ways to demonstrate property-based testing. I try to avoid examples using collections or mathematical operations. So I try to come up with ideas and demonstrations of properties that you may be using on your day-to-day. -day. Here is our demo project for today that you can grab it as a patron. And this is a simple testing project using XUnit, but also I installed FES Check. Besides that, you have here a simple domain. I have a client, an order with order lines, but also some DTOs like the client DTO and the client extensions that contains some methods to map from the DTO to the client in domain model and the other way around. And that is the base for our first property that you'll be writing today. To write your properties, you will follow the same approach that you do on a typical test. So you have your XUnit project, for example, or any unit, let's say, and you create a class, and there you will start defining properties that will run as tests. The first property of my system will be making sure that those mappings from client ETO into client domain model don't lose anything on the other way around. What does that mean? It means that I want to map from my DTO into the domain model, and when it gets back, I want to get the same values. This is extremely useful, for example, if you want to add properties into your objects, and you want to make sure that you don't lose something in the translation. You don't forget to apply to your mapping logic. You can also use this approach that you'll be seeing here now on things like serializers, where you can deserialize and serialize again and making sure that the input and output is exactly the same. How we are going to do that? First thing, we need to define that the method that we'll create is a property. On XUnit, usually you will define a fact. On FS check, you will be defining a property. So the first thing is adding an attribute property. Then you define your method. The method should return the property and I will give it a name map from DTO to client and back to DTO. So this is the property for, of our system. And I'm receiving as an input a client DTO. What does that mean? It means that the generator will build client DTOs, a lot of them, so uh, it can check the property. Now what we want to do is that from that DTO, we want to map it into the domain and map it again back to DTO. As you can see, the first map is returning a client. Client is the object from the domain. And the second one returns a client DTO. To validate our property, we just need to evaluate an expression that will return a boolean. So what I'll be doing is comparing those two objects. Since I'm using records, I can use the equals. And now I convert this boolean into a property and this is the property that I can return. This is our first property. It's a really simple one to define. Let's run it. It will run as any other test that you are used to. The difference is this one. As you can see here, it says that it went OK, and it passed 100 tests, it means that it provides a set of 100 values into this function to test it. Let's take a look on what those values are. To do that, I will add the verbose flag into our property, and we can see here on our result window that it tests with a lot of different values. For example, sending something empty, 
or other values even more complex like this ones. Let me make this test file so you can see the value of those properties. Let's go to our client in domain model, add a new property for the email. Let's go also into our client TTO and we define an optional property for the email as well, but we will not update those mappers. So now when we run these tests again, they will fail because the input value will not match the output value. Let's look into a different example now. Let's fill the property for our order. On our order object, I have a property that is calculating the total number of lines inside of that order based on the collection that it holds. Let's say that one of the properties of my system is that the number of lines in the order is always the same as the number of times that you add something into the order. So let's take a look. Let's define our method, our property. As you can see, I'm not receiving anything as an argument of this method. Why? Because by default, FES check will try to use the data types that you set there to try to bring up some things. Sometimes we'll want to define the data that you want to be generated. On those cases, you have different approaches. For example, on this case, I want to make sure that the number is always positive. Why? Because it doesn't make sense to me add minus three lines, okay? So it needs to always be positive. So what you'll be doing here is that I will define a generator. Okay, so I need to use this arb.from and there's one inside of fs check that is the positive int. So now I have a generator for positive ints. The next step is using a for all based on that input that is being generated. So I provide the generator that I've built and you'll use this generator to be generating values that will be forward into this expression that I'm providing right here. Once I have the expression, I now can define inside of it the logic to assert this property. Let's create a new order. Now I go from zero to the number that was generated and for each one, I will call the add product. And now I return a Boolean that will be used to check if we adhere to this property or not. So this small snippet of code will basically create a test, let's say, to check if the number of lines is correct, even if I'm adding zero lines, one, 10, or 100. Let me enable the verbose mode and let's run this property. And here you can see that it succeeds, but also that is sending different values into that method to check it. Now you may be asking where and when you should be using property-based testing, but that is a topic for another video. If you find this interesting, make sure you leave a comment. In the meanwhile, I highly recommend you to take a look into this video right here. I will see you soon. In the meanwhile, keep it simple.